Hello, everybody. Um, well, first of all, th uh, thank you for thank you for the uh, uh, for the opportunity to uh, uh, be able to present. Uh, it's the first time that Epic Labs presents uh, an event like this, so uh, for us, it's a very special uh, occasion. Um, what, what could possibly be uh, Ethergate, right? Uh, out of the name, uh, probably give some, give some clues. Um, but uh, yeah, let me introduce myself a little bit uh, and, and Epic Labs, and then we can um, continue. So today we're gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Epic Labs very quickly. Then we're gonna talk about uh, Ethergate, how it works, and then we're gonna set out and do a demo because it's, that's the fun, uh, the fun thing, right? So um, uh, very quickly about uh, Epic Labs and, and myself. Uh, we are a, a software innovation center uh, based out uh, in Madrid, in Spain. Uh, we're helping s uh, small uh, and large uh, companies in innovation processes. Uh, we are uh, experts in, in video streaming, video encoding, uh, and anything that has to do with machine learning applied to, uh, to video. Um, However, today we're not going to talk about video streaming. Uh, we uh, set out uh, one, one year ago uh, to, to provide some, some blockchain consulting services uh, as a way of kind, kind of coming out of the closet because we really wanted, wanted to do that. Um, so uh, we picked uh, one project uh, we could work on and uh, the idea was to uh, start uh, uh, testing the waters and do an actual application uh, and see what problems we would find along the way, okay? Um, um, three of our founders come from, from Akamai. Uh, as you may know, Akamai is a content delivery network. Uh, so uh, one of the uh, interests uh, out of the Web3 stacks is the, the whole Swarm uh, uh, project because it has all those features about storage, uh, about um, uh, distributing all the information uh, uh, around the internet, okay? So that was very, very interesting for us to to, uh, to start uh, tackling the waters in there. So we are, okay. Sorry, okay. Yeah, we're a team of 25, uh, and uh, the, the part of the team that is working on, uh, on blockchain services is around three. So it's, for us, it's a big uh, percentage. So what is Ethergate? Um, so the idea here, uh, and I could summarize this as, as uh, getting GitHub out of the way, uh, but the idea is, is to combine uh, Swarm storage with Ethereum smart contracts to uh, scalably and safely uh, host source code uh, with high, the high availability of a distributed network, okay? And enforce how the code is governed and, and do that with full transparency about the rules uh, that uh, uh, the community will follow to update the code. Okay, uh, and as well uh, to decentralize that workflow that we are in, uh, involved every day, right? Uh, we submit an issue, a bug, a bug report, uh, or, a, or a pull request, okay? So all that, uh, right now we're doing it on, on GitHub, so the idea would be to uh, not have to, to use a centralized service for that. And uh, at, the, at the end, uh, when everything is set up, then we can start incentivizing uh, people for, uh, to resolve issues, you know, with some sort of, uh, uh, internal economy in there to, to make sure that people um, are uh, solving the right issues, you know, uh, out of the maybe uh, hundreds of things that we need to do in an open source project. Uh, but before we get, jump into Ethergit, uh, let's take a little bit of uh, a look at prior art, similar projects. Uh, and we, when we set out to start with Ethergit, uh, we found uh, at least these three, uh, uh, probably there are more attempts at, at achieving this. Um, uh, we, we have Git torrent, which is pretty much uh, just storing all the uh, Git uh, repository in a, in a torrent. Git on Scuttlebot, which is uh, this uh, messaging uh, append-only database uh, where you can um, uh, store information. And then the one that got me really excited about uh, was, was Mango, but uh, the only problem that I see is, is that at least I, I couldn't find any updates on, on Mango in the last two years, so for me it was a little bit um, uh, disappointing. So we, we started uh, um, about three months ago to, to start building Ethergit. Uh, this is very much a work in progress for us. Uh, uh, today is, is actually very early or too early to show uh, what we're doing, but uh, our idea uh, was to get feedback, to see uh, what everybody thinks, 
and, and see if this is worth continuing uh, and what, is, uh, you know, what are the ideas or what are the th things that people need uh, uh, to use this. Okay. So um, about uh, components and features of Ethergit, uh, uh, Ethergit comes with a Git plugin. So this is uh, something that you install on your, on your machine. Um, fortunately, Git is a, a system that is uh, extensible. Okay? So it comes with the possibility of adding new protocols uh, to the stack. The, the one that we use the most is SSH. Every day we are using SSH to, to push code, but Git is extensible, so you can uh, create your own uh, plugin so that you can uh, support any backend. Okay. Um, we also provide a JavaScript library that can be used to build uh, web applications, uh, uh, and that's one of the applications that we're going to show you today. Uh, it also comes with a Golang library in case uh, a more uh, backend type of application needs to connect to, to, uh, to Ethergit. And then uh, we're also going to be showing an HTML5 uh, DAP that is, uh, its idea is to, um, to allow you to browse the code and interact with others uh, uh, with your browser, I mean, like a, in an everyday um, situation. And then uh, in terms of architecture, uh, the contracts, the smart contracts that uh, back up any repository are modular, so it means that uh, you can uh, bring into your contract the features that you need uh, for that particular situation. Okay, um, okay. So le let's uh, uh, dig a little bit into into uh, into it. Okay. So as as many of you know, a, a Git repo is sort of like a blockchain, right? Because uh, at the end. Uh, all those commits are referencing the previous one, okay, with a hash. So that is like like uh, like a blockchain. The the thing is that the hash algorithm that is used um, uh, for referencing uh, uh, those objects in Git is a SHA one, which is as of today unsuitable for securing code, um, but it's useful for just making sure that the code was not you know damaged or whatever. Okay. Um, the thing is that, obviously, we're not going to change the whole Git and all the repositories that are out there, so there's some things that we need to do uh, in order to be able to use SH1, SH, uh, SHA-1 uh, in, this, in this system. Um, also, uh, when, when we use, uh, when we use uh, Git, uh, all the code governing uh, logic is not part of the repository itself. All the governance uh, of our code is uh, based on, uh, on whatever tool we're using, for example, GitHub or Bitbucket. Uh, where they allow you to create accounts and then you set branch permissions and things like that. All those things uh, uh, are not part of the repository itself. Uh, and then also, and, and most importantly, all the issue and pull requests uh, and all that history is kept in the tool that we are using, for example, Bitbucket or, or GitHub. So I know that if um, our uh, you know, Bitbucket or GitHub disappear, Everybody has a copy of the entire Git repository in their machines, but one of the things that we would lose is the entire uh, pull request history and issues, and that's one of the things that makes, um, uh, makes you hostage in the system you are. Okay? So if you base your project in GitHub, then if you want to move the, the Git repository, that's fine, but all, the, you know, all the, the, the pull request history and everything, which has a lot of value, you would uh, uh, lose and you would, keep it in, it would, you would be hostage there. Okay. Um, so how does uh, Ethergit uh, uh, work? So we start off uh, by, by I'm going to talk about an example in which it's just a repository with one file and we do one commit. Okay? If we do something like that, uh, when, we, uh, uh, when we do a commit of that, that single file, uh, Git is going to create, start creating some objects okay? that is going to be storing that .git mysterious folder that we have in our project. Okay? So uh, uh, for a file, for a code file, it's going to create a blob object, OK? Uh, and it's going to calculate a, a, a SHA-1 hash uh, of that blob object. And since that blob object is going to be in a directory, for example, the root directory of our repository, it's going to create a tree object. Probably it's not very readable, but uh, on the right side, we have a blob object. On the, in the middle, uh, we have a tree object, OK? And what it's going to do is, is, is going to have that SHA-1 hash point to that, uh, to that blob object, okay? And then when we commit, uh, uh, it's going to create a commit object with our name, with a commit message, uh, and it's also going to contain a link, a SHA-1 uh, uh, hash of the tree object, which in turn contains a, ha a hash of the blob object, uh, and also the, the commit object has a, a hash of the parent commit, and that's way, that way uh, you get the full, uh, at this level you get a snapshot of the, um, of the, of the code at that point, 
and then if you go down, then you get all the history and how the code changed, okay? Um, and, and, and last, uh, what you do is, is you uh, update the branch pointer so that you know uh, that branch one or master or development branch point to that particular commit. Uh, up, until the, um, up until this point, there's nothing new here. This is how Git works, okay? The idea is how, to, how we put this structure uh, to work in a decentralized way, okay? This is on our computer. How do we push it uh, to Swarm? So to do, to do this, we have to do a little bit of uh, uh, work. So uh, in order to up upload those blob objects and tree objects and commit objects to Swarm, uh, we need to start doing some, um, some magic in here, okay? So the first thing that we do is we wrap each of the objects with a header that is going to give us some meta information about that particular object. Uh, we call it the ethergit header, which contains just a version of the, of the protocol, uh, a compression flag to see if we are going to be compressing the object or not. Um, in the case of a tree object, we're going to be also including a, a swarm hash of the uh, uh, previously uploaded uh, blob object. So that way we can uh, keep a double uh, reference, okay? We keep the SHA-1 reference, which is the one that Git needs, okay? But we also create a, a swarm hash reference so we can also pull uh, that object out of, uh, out of swarm. And for the commit object, we do something similar. We, we just wrap it. We put the, the swarm hash of the previous object that we have uploaded, uh, and also the, uh, uh, the, parent of the, the parent hash of the, of, the par of the parent object that we also have uploaded, okay? So at the end, we are uh, replicating all this pointer structure in a way that swarm can understand. And then uh, the, the key difference is that uh, when we have to um, uh, put the branch reference, we store that branch reference into a smart contract. So that way, uh, uh, the smart contract is going to be uh, um, uh, managing what particular branch or what particular commit is the real uh, uh, version of the code that we want to, um, uh, that we want to publish or that we want to uh, show everybody, okay? So branch one could be master, so uh, every time that we commit to master, then we're really saying to the world, hey, you know, this is the best version of our code so far, um, and we're publishing it here. So at the end, that small block in there is, is small, but uh, uh, in, in that smart contract, you are really defining uh, what are the rules of engagement of your uh, open source community uh, around your code. So if, anyone, if anybody can push, uh, who uh, has permission to what branch, Okay, whether or not you need to have a certain amount of tokens to, to do a pull request, you know, all those rules you can configure and define uh, in, um, in a smart contract. That's up to, up to you to define, okay? Uh, Ethergit defines uh, sort of like an interface to have that uh, uh, communication with, that, with the contract, okay? Um, but it's up to you to define the rules of engagement of your, of your community, okay? So at the end of the day, what you get is a, a, a team of developers use the, the remote helper, the Git plugin, to talk to Swarm and the Ethereum repository. And then you also have developers uh, using the, uh, the web the, uh, the distributed application to, uh, uh, to visualize uh, the code in a more friendly way uh, and also uh, uh, work in the review process. You know, uh, do I um, uh, merge this pull request? Do I answer to this issue? All those things you do on the, on the web uh, interface, okay? Um, okay, so with all this explanation, then we can uh, do a demo and see uh, uh, how, that, uh, how that looks. So what we're gonna do in the demo is we're gonna deploy a new repository, which is actually deploying a, a smart contract, okay? Uh, we're gonna take a look at that smart contract. Uh, we didn't, I didn't put any, anything that was very, very complex. Uh, then we're gonna push some changes to that repository, and then we're gonna see how that works uh, on the web. Um, for that, I'm going to change to this mic. Okay. Okay. You still see my screen? Okay. Is it sufficiently readable from behind? Uh, console? Okay. 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 Can you hear me? Okay. All right. Um, so first of all, we're going to take a look at the, the contract and we're going to deploy this and see what happens. Okay, good enough. 
Okay. So this simple contract has just two functions that we need to look at. Okay. Um, the first one is the function that is called every time that somebody pushes a new uh, comment. Okay. This is update ref. Um, and the, the second one is the one that is seldom used. It's, it's used only at the beginning of a repository usually. And uh, you use it to say what branch is the most important one, okay, or the head branch. Usually uh, we call it master, but it could be anything, okay. Um, so the idea here is that uh, uh, if you let the, co the, the, um, the application reach this sub super dot update ref, then the, the push happens, okay. If for some reason you reject or you throw uh, an exception before that, uh, before control reaches that, that uh, statement, then uh, the update doesn't happen, okay. Uh, so in this case, as you can see uh, in this contract, uh, we're defining an, an owner of the repository and we're storing that in the owner variable, okay. And then um, we are, uh, um, uh, we're requiring that in this particular contract, uh, what we're saying is only the owner can modify the code, okay. So this is what this contract is about. You take a look at it and then you see what is the governance model of this, uh, of this repository. It's just one guy that uh, does all the pushes, okay. Uh, it's enough for our demo, but the idea here is that it could have uh, um, a, a more complex rules, okay. Uh, it could check if you have enough push tokens or something, okay, or that do you have enough uh, tokens of the uh, project that uh, you're uh, uh, working on. Whatever, okay. That is up to you to, to decide uh, what sort of uh, contract you want to put in here, okay. You could also check whether or not you are in a set of approved uh, uh, users, okay. Uh, all that uh, uh, logic is up to you and it's very simple to implement because it's a few uh, lines of code uh, uh, to implement that logic, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to deploy this contract, okay, uh, and we're, we're going to see how this works. So I'm going to create this. Uh, so I get MetaMask asking for gas. Um, so I'm going to say yes, submit this. Uh, and I have Robson Etherscan here. Uh, and now I can see, back. I can see that there is a transaction pending. Um, so we're going to have to wait a little bit for it to complete. Uh, this will refresh automatically once that happens. Any questions so far? So while we wait for uh, this transaction to be mined. Yeah. Do you imagine that this system is always used with the smart contract governance? Or do you envision the model where it's just used for the decentralized storage itself? Because I know some projects, they have issues storing things on GitHub, for example, because it's stored in the US uh -huh. uh, for export restrictions and so on. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, just centralizing everything to GitHub is a problem mm -hmm. on its own, right? Where, but many projects, they don't really need an incentivization layer or a governance layer. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's the most of you? Yeah, yeah very good question. Um, you, uh, um, um, you actually don't have to use the smart contract stuff. Okay, um, the, the architecture of, of Ethergit has what is called a registry architecture. One of the registries is uh, a smart contract, uh, Ethereum smart contract registry, which is uh, what I'm demoing today, okay? Uh, but uh, you don't have to use the smart contract registry. You could use a local registry, for example, just uh, store a reference uh, in your disk. Um, in the source code, we have uh, a, an implementation of a local registry, which what it does is, instead of going to a smart contract, it tells you what you have written to a smart contract. So you could share that with, uh, with friends, okay? So you would be using Swarm, for example, for just uh, the code, okay? But the governance of it would be maybe your, you and your friends exchanging emails. That, that's perfectly fine, okay? Okay, I think we got this mine. Okay, so I'm going to copy uh, the contract that uh, address that came out, and I'm going to go to uh, my um, console. Okay, so 
nothing different than Git, uh, Git cloning in a repository. So what is different is that instead of putting SSH colon slash slash and such, it's going to be a um, custom protocol. Okay. Uh, so it's going to look like this. Okay. So I'm going to git clone, ether git, colon, dash dash, whatever. And that's the contract address that we just deployed. So uh, the first step, what it does is it checks the capabilities of that repository, okay? Uh, because, the, because of the modular contract architecture, different repositories could support different features, okay? So one of the things Ethergit does is to probe uh, what kind of contract is it, okay? But in this case, it's a very simple one. Uh, and one of the things that Git is saying is you appear to have cloned an empty repository, okay? So it has uh, created uh, this folder, um, and this folder doesn't have anything. So it's time to start with our uh, application, okay? So what I have done is uh, uh, I have prepared a, just a, a file to, to, to uh, commit, okay? It's a simple JavaScript, um, um, a simple JavaScript file, and now our repository has uh, main.js in the folder. So what I'm gonna do is, is um, uh, well, first of all, I'm gonna show you what main.js has, just for, for reference purposes. Uh, it has a hello world uh, message, okay? It's a JavaScript application with a hello world message, and we're gonna commit this to our contract, okay, to Swarm, okay? So what I do is, is git add, this is a regular git commands. I'm not doing anything strange here. Um, so uh, I'm gonna add main.js, and I'm going to commit this with a message. Okay. Okay. So I commit this, um, and now it's a commit, but on my local machine. And now I'm going to push it to the internet to to Ethergate. This is actually pushing to Swarm. So what it's doing is uh, uh, detecting that remote head is not set. Remote head is, as I said before, is uh, what is the, the the most important branch in this case, master, because because the the um, uh, this is a, a new repository. We didn't set what was the main branch, okay? So that is the first thing that it had to do. And, uh, and it has uploaded uh, uh, the content, the main.js file and other objects to, to the repository. So we're gonna see what's happening in my, in my Ethereum address, okay? As you can see, there are two transactions in there. One of the, trans one, the first transaction is a one-off. Uh, is the, fir the first time that you commit something to a, a, an Ethergate repo is gonna update the main branch, uh, but that is just a one-off uh, uh, operation. And then the second one is the actual push that I, uh, uh, that I did, okay? So we need to also wait for this to mine. Uh, not, not yet there, so we have to wait a little bit until it gets mined. Okay, there you go. So, took about a minute to, to appear, but those two transactions, the, the two top ones, uh, as you can see, is uh, on, the, on the contract 0x5d5b, which is the one that uh, we have created. So now, uh, if I go uh, back to my console and uh, I remove I remove the, the repository, I totally delete it, okay? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and clone it again, okay? And then we can see uh, that we're retrieving the, the file that I just committed, okay? So there you go, downloaded everything. And there's our main.js uh, file in there, okay? Okay, we can see what it is and run it, and that's our application. So we were able to push uh, a code to, to Swarm and govern it uh, with, a, with a smart contract. I could do this push because I was the owner or the, the, of the repository as, as, as uh, uh, expressed in this, uh, in this smart contract, okay? Otherwise, I would have gotten an error message saying that I am not authorized to push there, okay? Um, okay, uh, so now let's take a look at how it looks, uh, how this looks on, on, a, on the web, okay? 
Um, so I have a, a development server running on my computer. Uh, and this is how it looks on the web, OK? Um, this is a DAP, though I didn't uh, host it uh, on, on Swarm. Uh, but it's a static, a fully static HTML application, uh, HTML5 application that can be um, run totally uh, without any sort of server. Okay, the only thing it needs is is a Swarm node to to connect to and a get node to connect. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna open uh, the repository uh, that uh, um, that we created before. Okay, this is our repository, 0x5d. Uh, I'm gonna just put a test. Test repo or test. Save. OK. And now I can open it here. And then I can, I can browse it as, uh, as if any, as any uh, other tools that you guys are familiar with. OK. I could uh, uh, click on the, on the file and, and see uh, the content of the file. Uh, I can look at the commits. And then I can see this is the first commit. And if I click on the commit, I get a diff of the, in this case, it's a new file, so nothing, no, nothing fancy there. Uh, but I get a, a, a diff of the, of the file. Uh, I also can see what are the branches that uh, are in my project. In this case, only the master branches there. Uh, and then we have mocked uh, these two screens, the issues and the pull request sc uh, screens, because uh, we're still, this is still a work in progress, but the idea is we also uh, um, have all the issue, uh, issue tracking uh, facilities uh, in there and the pull request as well. Okay, we could have uh, all the different um, uh, pull requests in there to approve or uh, or merge. Okay, what else can we do here? Um, for example, just let's take a look at another repository that is a little bit more uh, complete. Okay, because our our repository was on only one commit. Okay, it didn't have uh, uh, anything, but you know a larger repo looks like this. Okay. Uh, you can you, uh, click on the folders, uh, uh, browse, uh, uh, browse code. Uh, you can go to the commits, and uh, you click on any commit. Uh, then you see uh, a larger div, you know, with all the things that we are uh, used to seeing in GitHub. Okay. Um, and again, you know, uh, in this case, for example, this project has two branches, um, and uh, it's a, a little bit more more interesting. Um, what else do we have in here? So one of the things that we also have mocked for now is the create repository uh, aspect. Uh, you could see the create repository functionality by me manually submitting a contract to, to the Ethereum Robsten uh, um, uh, blockchain. But the idea would be to make it very easy for the user to deploy a new repository. So in this case, uh, the idea is you create a repository and it asks what type of uh, um, a governance model you want for your repository. You could have a basic um, one, which is uh, only you are able to commit, like the one that I, I was showing you before. You could have a more standard one, which is uh, uh, I am able to, to push to the repository, but also my friends or colleagues or a list of uh, particular people. And then custom would be write your own contract and do whatever uh, uh, you think uh, uh, is good, okay? You define all those rules uh, in there. Um, and also other things that uh, I, we uploaded here just uh, for a demo is uh, our own uh, repository. We <laughs> host it there as well. Uh, but also the Go Ethereum repository is, is here. So uh, here you can see, well, you know, um, it's a Git repo. So we pushed it to, um, we pushed it to Swarm. So it's just hosting itself. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool. Um, and OK, so this is the extent of the demo. So let me go back to, uh, to the presentation. OK. Um, so roadmap, things that uh, we would like to, to do next. We would like to complete the HTML5 DAP that you saw. OK, so it's fully functional. It has all the, all the things like issue and PR tracking. Uh, that you can edit code online, that you don't need to like, use the command line git to edit a file for a uh, small change. Uh, that you can also PR, uh, uh, merge PRs uh, uh, on, the, on the web application. Um, we need to improve the performance of the different uh, aspects of pushing code and downloading code. Um, we want to also provide some sample contracts that are uh, a little bit more advanced than just a I can commit and you can't. Okay? 
Uh, and then uh, we want to also uh, add a, a bounty issue management uh, built in into the whole platform so that uh, a particular team can incentivize others to, to, um, uh, to, to contribute okay, with uh, whatever uh, system they come up with. Okay? Uh, and also a, a modular re repository contract uh, editor where you can just find some modules that are interesting for your, for your contract and then you put them in, um, uh, in, your, in your contract. Okay? Uh, and then once we want this to scale, not everything can be done at an HTML5 browser application. Uh, we will probably need uh, some sort of server side or node uh, type of component that takes care of indexing and searching and things like that, uh, that a, a browser is not going to be able to, uh, to do. Uh, but in essence, uh, I would say that the roadmap is to get rid of, the, uh, of GitHub altogether. Okay, that, that is a very ambitious goal, but uh, the idea would be to, to uh, go for it, really. Um, okay, so with this, uh, thank you very much for, for your time and any questions, uh, uh, very much appreciated. <laughs>